Well, this will be kind of a little bit new for all of us. Uh, I used to do an awful lot of uh, online classes. This is a, a relatively new platform that many, many uh, educators are going to, and it works pretty well. So uh, once again, just want to make sure you all have your sheet of paper. This is a writing class. So we're actually going to, I'm going to get you writing in the next 20 minutes. So that's kind of the title of this class is zero to writing in 20 minutes. Um, just to get a, an idea, just let me know in the chat what grade you're in, what grade levels you're in. We've got a five, six, seven. Okay, grade seven, grade five. Okay, grade five, six, seven. So I want you to pull out that sheet of paper. It's called Vulture Bees. I'm going to read it to you first. I'm going to read it out loud. And then we're going to go back through it. And I wanted to show you how to use your highlighter. And we're going to pick out some key words. Key words that will help you remember what the sentence is about. Okay. So I'm going to read it out loud. And then we'll go right into it. Vulture bees. In the forests of Central and South America, scientists have discovered a very different kind of bee. This strange bee does not feed on pollen and nectar as most other bees do. Instead, it gobbles up the flesh of dead snakes, anteaters, and other forest creatures. When these bees feed, they spit out a special ke chemical called an enzyme. And this enzyme changes the dead animal's flesh into a gooey, chewy mush. The bees eat the mushy meat and store it in their special meat stomachs. Now, one of the reasons we like this paragraph is because it's really gross and disgusting. And most boys really like that kind of stuff. So uh, my apologies to the girls, but uh, this is kind of what we have to work with. And I'm going to show you how we can do what we call note taking or taking notes and then writing from your notes. So let's start with vulture bees. And you'll see right below the vulture bees, you're going to see a little space right here. And this is where you can put the title. We're going to put the title of this paragraph right here. And I'm going to just put in vulture bees. And I'm going to type in vulture bees. And you can do the same thing on yours. Every paragraph that we will would be writing, we're going to have a title for it. So this one's Vulture Bees. So what you learn about right away is that this is the topic of this paragraph. And every paragraph should be just one topic, about one thing. So this one's going to be about Vulture Bees. And uh, so our next step here is I want you to take a highlighter. And I'm going to pick one here. I got a highlighter here. And I'm going to highlight some keywords. I'm going to give you a couple of little rules about highlighting, OK? You can only pick three words per sentence to help you remember what the sentence is about. Three words maximum. So when I'm looking at this sentence, I'm going to look at the first sentence. In the forests of Central and South America, scientists have discovered a very different kind of bee. And I'll do this first one for you. So if I was to pick that, I would go scientists. I think that's important. Scientists discovered. And I've got one more word to pick, OK, in this first sentence. I already know, because the title is about bees, vulture bees, that I don't need to use the word bees again, OK? So I'm going to go forests. That seems to be a keyword. For in the forests, scientists discovered a different kind of bee. And we have. Forests, comma, scientists, and discovered. Now, I also have this thing, Central and South America. And I think that's important. So I'm going to highlight Central and South America, but I'm not going to write it all out. So when I go back here, to my add text, I'm going to do central S and A. Okay, 
So now if I'm down here, I'm looking at vulture bees and it says forest scientists discovered C and S A. So that's my notes for the first sentence. Okay. Now you might pick out different words or different ones that will help you remember what the sentence is about, but you need to pick out three and numbers and symbols are free. So I did the first sentence for you. And if I was to just only look at these words, forests, scientists discovered Central and South America, and I know it's about bees, then I might make up a sentence with those words. And it might be in the forests of Central and South America, the scientists discovered a different kind of bee. Now that I'm remembering all of that just by looking at those key words. Okay. So I look at the keywords and I say them out. I say a sentence out loud. Oh, by the way, do you guys know what a sentence is? A sentence is a complete thought up made up of a group of words. Okay. Very good. That's from Angela. A sentence is a complete thought made up of a group of words. Okay. Uh, Anybody else? I'd like to hear your definition of what is a sentence. A sentence is a complete thought that begins with a capital letter and ends with a period. Oh, very good. Okay, so that's a little bit more information about a sentence. Very good. Okay. A sentence is a complete thought that is used to make a story. Oh, okay. All right. So that's, so we kind of, everybody has the complete thought idea. All right. Now, I'm going to just switch over to my screen again that I can type on, and I'm going to give you a definition of a sentence. So I'm just going to flip over back to here. Okay, can you see that? S equals S plus V plus O? Yeah. Okay, so here's what it is. A sentence, and I'm going to put it on the next line, equals subject, the subject of the sentence, plus a verb, plus an object. So the subject of the sentence is the, the person or thing doing the action, doing whatever it is that needs to be done. The verb is the action that's being taken. If the dog chased the cat, the verb is chased. It's doing the action. The dog is the subject and the object is the thing that the thing is happening to and that would be the cat. So a sentence equals a subject plus a verb plus an object. That's the definition we're going to use here in this class, okay? So now I'm going to go back up to our vulture bees and let's go to the second paragraph now, or second sentence. And here's what I'd like you to do. This, and I'm going to read it first, this strange bee does not feed on pollen and nectar as most other bees do. I'm going to, I'm going to help you with this one. We're going to pick out three key words that'll help us remember what the sentence is about. And one of them is feed. They actually feed on what? Pollen and nectar. So those would be my three key words, okay? And I'm gonna bring them down to this second line and I want you to do the same thing. So I'm gonna add some text and we're gonna go right here. And it's going to be, what did we say? Feed. pollen and nectar, okay? But it does not feed on pollen and nectar. So how would we say that? How would we say it does not feed? Well, we could take the word feed and I'm gonna put that X right on top of feed. So the X reminds me, it does not feed on pollen and nectar like other bugs do. Okay. That's a little trick. It's a little note taking trick so that you can, if something doesn't do something, then you can just put it, use that word and put an X through it. So it does not feed on pollen and nectar. Okay. Now what I want you to do is let's go to the next sentence. And this is one that you are going to pick the words yourself. Okay. So instead it gobbles up the flesh of dead snakes, ant eaters, and other creatures. So I want you to take your highlighter and figure out, okay, what three key words are gonna help me remember that what that sentence is about? 
I'll just read it again. Instead, it gobbles up the flesh of dead snakes, anteaters, and other forest creatures. Who would like to sh share their three words? I'll, I, and then I'll see if I can uh, just put up your hand if you're if you got your three keywords. Okay, Marcus, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to unmute you. Yeah, I put instead gobbles and flesh. Okay, that's those are great. So that'll help you remember what that sentence is about. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to mute you. And who else can share their three words? Just put up your hand so I can see. So just if you have, there you go. Okay, Angela, uh, what three keywords did you pick? Flesh, dead, and creatures. Flesh, dead, and creatures. So uh, Angela picked out different words. The mo most important thing here is, will that help you remember what the sentence is about? Okay. Gobbles, flesh, and snakes. Okay, now, now that you've highlighted those words, I want you to write that on line two, okay, in your outline. So let's go to line two on your outline and just write down the keywords that you have chosen. You go ahead and write yours. I'm going to just highlight this one here. It uh, gobbles. Gobbles is a, definitely a keyword. Oh, admit. Okay, we've got somebody else coming in. Gobbles is a keyword. Uh, flesh, I think, is a keyword. And creatures because that kind of covers everything so your whatever you picked is good for you just as long as it helps you so just just for sake of filling this out i'm going to type in gobbles um, flesh and creatures okay good now, let's go to the next sentence, and it says, when these bees feed, they spit out a special chemical called an enzyme. So I want you to, again, highlight three keywords from this sentence that'll help you remember what the sentence is about. Once you've highlighted them, then we're going to add them to line three, okay? So when these bees feed, they spit out a special chemical called an enzyme. Once you have your three key words, just put up your hand and let me know um, which ones you picked, okay? Oh, okay, Ryan, go ahead, turn on your mic and just say which ones you picked. Spit, spit, um, spit chemical enzyme. Okay, very good. Uh, anybody else? I did feed, when they feed spit chemical. Feed, spit, chemical. Okay, good. Angela? Uh, spit, chemical, enzyme. Okay, very good. Edric? Spit, chemical, enzyme. But those are all great. And I would have probably picked the same ones that you did. So I'm just going to highlight uh, some. Uh, they spit, chemical, and sometimes when there's a special word, then I want to make sure that I include that. So I definitely say enzyme is a special word. So I'm going to add that now to the outline. And they spit chemical and enzyme. Enzyme is a fancy word, mean, must be very special. So there we go, they spit chemical enzyme. Now let's go to the next sentence and have you pick out the keywords. This enzyme changes the dead animal's flesh into a gooey, chewy mush. Okay, pick out three keywords that'll help you remember what that sentence is about. Eric, go ahead. Enzyme, flesh, gooey. Enzyme, flesh, gooey. Okay, great. Marcus? I put. Changes animals' flesh. Changes animals' flesh. Okay, good. Angela? Animals, gooey, and mush. Okay, and Edric, I see your hand up there. Changes flesh and mush. Okay, perfect. First, I'm going to highlight. I'll just do kind of what you've done, and I'm going to go changes flesh into mush. That, that'll help me remember what that sentence is about. So, and... Okay, let's go to the last sentence. And the bees eat the mushy meat and store it in their special meat stomachs. Okay, same thing. Highlight three key words with your highlighter. And then once you've highlighted them, just write them into the outline down below. 
I put mushy stormy. Okay, perfect. Uh, who? Oh, Edric, go ahead. Go Eat, ahead. store, and stomach. There you go. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, anybody else? So I'm just going to do, I'm going to use that as my three words. Again, there's no right or wrong, by the way, with picking whichever words you wanted. So store, meat, stomachs. Okay, now we, we oh, I got a little spelling error there. Okay. Store in their meat stomachs. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I want you to take your piece of paper and I want you to fold it in half so you cannot see the original paragraph. So just fold it in half, just above where it says, vulture, where, where you wrote on your notes, vulture bees, so that you're not looking at the original paragraph anymore. Now, this is going to be fun. Um, I'll just go across the screen here. So Eric, I'm going to have you look at the keywords of Roman numeral one, and I'm going to have you just tell me a complete sentence just using those words. Don't look at the original, only look at your notes. Okay. And Marcus, I'm going to have you do number one sentence, Angela, number two, and Eric, Edric, number three. Okay. So, Eric, I want you to just look at, uh, in mine, I have forest scientists discovered C and S A. But you have whatever you have. So I want you to look at that and then turn on your microphone and just say, just speak out a complete sentence using those keywords. In the forests of South America and North America, scientists dis dis Oh, what did the scientists do? Discovered. Okay. All right, is that a complete sentence? Does it have a subject and a verb and an object? I think it's pretty close. Now, uh, Marcus, I want you to read your, the, that number one sentence. And I've got X over feed, pollen, nectar. So just speak out a sentence based on those three keywords. Okay. They do not eat pollen and nectar like normal bees. Okay, very good. And Angela, just looking at number two, uh, and I've got gobbles flesh creatures, but just speak out a complete sentence uh, using those three keywords or your three keywords. They gobble up the flesh of creatures. They gobble up the flesh of creatures. Okay. And that's a complete sentence, by the way. Uh, number three, that would be Edric. Just look at your three keywords and speak out a complete sentence. They spit out a chemical that contains enzymes onto the dead meat. Very good. That's definitely a complete sentence. Okay. Who would like to volunteer for number four? I need a volunteer to just say out a complete sentence using the number four. It changes animals' flesh so they can eat. Okay. It changes animals' flesh so it can eat. That's a complete sentence. And who would like to volunteer number five, the, the last sentence? The bees eat the meat and store it in special stomachs. There you go. We are rapidly running out of time. I've got about five minutes left. But what I want you to do now, and we won't have time for this, but what I want you to do is now that you said those words, I want you to just write them down. Okay. So look at that first sentence, forest scientists discovered Central South America. Take those words that you said and now just write them out. There's, I think I give you an extra piece of paper there that you can write out that complete sentence, okay? And then you go to the next sentence. Fick does not feed pollen nectar. Write out a complete sentence just using those three keywords, okay? And you'll continue all the way through. And you'll have written an entire paragraph. How many of you ever knew about vulture bees before we started this? Nobody? This is a way that you can take a, a little paragraph, something you know nothing about, take some keywords, and then speak them out into a complete sentence using your own words, and then write those words down on a piece of paper. And until you do that, then you'll have an entire paragraph written, okay? 
Now that might take you a little bit longer. The, the title of this was zero to uh, writing in 20 minutes. <clears throat> Basically, we got you writing because if you can say it, then you can write it down. Okay, you just remember the words that you said and just write it down. So you can do this with anything. You can do it with a uh, little article. Uh, you can do it with a little short story. You can write down the key words of each sentence, look at them, make up a sentence in your head, <clears throat> and then write it down. Okay. It might not be perfect, you know, the first time or whatever, but at least it gets you started writing. And you're writing from something. You're not writing from an empty head. Okay. And just grab yourself a piece of writing that you think is kind of cool, outline it, take it, take it away, and you can rewrite it just with your outline. Do you guys know who Benjamin Franklin is or was? You've heard of that name? <clears throat> this is how he taught himself how to write. He would actually take a piece of writing, make notes from it, put it all away, and come back two days later and write just from his notes. And then he, he would see how close he got to the original. And that's a way for you to practice getting started with writing. Take notes, speak it out, write it down, come back to it a day or two later, look at it again, see if it was like the original, and you've already taught yourself how to write. Now, there's lots more that we can teach you. There's lots more that, that could be done. But this is a great way to get started. It's a lot easier than, so what did you do this summer? So that's zero to writing in 20 minutes. And I just wanted to thank you guys so much for just being a part of this class and just trying a few things. It was great having you with us. So uh, thank you very much.